because i am very sure so far we are so convenient and so comfortable in managing distal radius fractures however it could be i mean let it be a extra articular fracture or a intra articular fracture with or without ulnar styloid fracture but in my next 15 to 20 minutes i would like to uh, explain all of you that some of the fractures they may need a specific classification they may need a specific investigation and they may need another sort of treatment apart from fracture fixation and in this topic first of all i would like to just uh, highlight one case that many times at least once in a year or some patient i mean some surgeons might be seeing very commonly this that this young gentleman had must have undergone at least 3 to 4 operations and now he has come to us with this kind of a problem where he is himself subluxating his wrist and otherwise functionally he says i am able to do everything there is no pain but if we study his x rays let us see when he was 14 year old this was a 2009 x ray then this was 2014 x ray when he was 19 year old and the current video and this is at the you know at the age of 25 and 2020 x ray if we see this x ray if you see the distal radius on the left side it definitely looks articular surface loose completely incongruent and if you see the lunate and distal radius on right side and if you see the lunate and distal radius on the left side it is completely subluxated now now the challenge remains with us is whether it's a bony problem or it was a ligament problem or it was a infection that has become all right now so in my opinion i am going to discuss in last next 15 minutes a relevant surgical anatomy of the wrist ligaments which are there are almost around 45 wrist ligaments but we need to know at least four on the radial volar side and two on the dorsal side that i would like to explain in some of the distal radius fracture we have to go using a classification which is beyond what we use normally like we use frickman classification or we use a, a gartland classification but then we need to use some specific classifications we have to understand the literature because i am very sure the ligament injuries associated with the wrist fractures the publications are not that because the number of cases are not that uh, large in series in any institute then we have to understand that which fracture that we should be suspicious of considering or that patient might be having a ligament injury and then i would like to discuss one or two cases as per the ligament injuries the topic that i am not going to cover in this talk is tfcc injury because it itself is a completely different topic of discussion and more or less the treatment guidelines are very clear in tfcc injuries with distal radius fractures let us now consider a important volar extrinsic ligament so what is extrinsic ligament is they originate from radius and they get inserted into the carpus the most important three ligaments if we consider from radial styloid to ulnar side the first ligament is radio scapho capitate ligament second is long radio lunate ligament and third is radio scapho lunate ligament we may not remember the name but the names are as per their attachment on the bone and if we see this diagram i would like you to understand see the radio scaphoid ligament because the scaphoid is also on the radial aspect of the wrist it is the ligament originates extremely at the rim of volar aspect of the radius and it is it is a fan shaped ligament which covers the scaphoid and capitate another ligament is scapho lunate ligament you understand it is attached at the volar rim volar rim of the lunate facet and it is attached to the distally at the lunate side so if these two ligaments are extremely important to understand because the any fracture around the radial styloid is going to cause instability of the rsc ligament and any fracture around the volar aspect of the lunate facet of the distal radius is going to give us disturbed configuration of the carpus if these injuries these ligaments are injured so these are the most three important volar ligament you see radio scapho capitate ligament radio lunate and radio triquetral ligament now the clinical relevance of these ligaments are whenever somebody gets a fracture of the volar rim of 
distal radius we have to consider injury to this and there could be a subluxation of the radial side of the carpus when you have a radio tricuspid ligament injury which is because the ligaments are attached at the lunate facet of the radius there could be a luno tricuspid or a radio lunate instability and if there is a long radio lunate ligament injury we may have a dipunch fracture or a volar ulnar facet fracture now the two most common dorsal extrinsic ligaments are dorsal radio carpal ligament as shown in this picture and intercarpal ligament but usually in distal radius fractures the radio carpal ligaments are most important as shown here and whenever you see a dorsal comminution of distal and radius please be worry about these ligament injuries because they may cause subluxation of the carpus either dorsally or volarly we will see that in the subsequent slides so in my opinion every intraarticular fracture or any juxtaarticular fracture of the distal end radius we have to consider or at least have a google image of these three classification in our phone so that we can use them and this will help us to analyze the different types of ligament injury in intraarticular fractures of the distal radius so i am going to discuss the number one classification that is the most important in in this classification what we want to understand is type 2b means what it's a dipunch fracture which is not reducible and something called spike fragment it's a avulsion injuries of the distal end radius these are the two things 2b and 3 the in the meloni classification please consider about a ligament injury in the distal end radius other fractures are like type a is undisplaced fracture and type c is explosion fracture the treatment is anyways completely different but please try to whenever we see a multiple fragments in the x ray please try to understand and analyze this fragment this is a ct scan based classification usually and even good quality x ray can also help us to classify fracture as per the meloni another important classification is medoff classification it is nothing confusing basically they have divided the entire distal radius just like a tbl plafond or upper end of the tibia they have divided the entire distal radius into different fragments like radial column or there is a ulnar corner or there is a dorsal wall there is a volar rim and there is a intraarticular fracture so why we need to understand this classification is based completely on the ct scan and whenever we see a very comminuted intraarticular fracture of the distal end radius if we understand these fragments many times putting wires multiply into the multiple fragment is not going to give us a good function sometime because of now availability of good quality implants we can actually have a fragment specific fixation but to understand the fragment specific fixation we have to understand which fracture is or which fragment of that particular distal end radius is injured because many ligaments now if you see radial column you see radio scapho capitate ligament is attached at the rim if you see a central dorsal wall dorsal intercarpal or dorsal radio carpal ligaments are attached here and if you see the ulnar corner the volar i mean the volar or radio long radio lunate ligament and radio tricuspid ligaments are attached be careful unless you fix this fracture these ligaments are not going to heal and they patients will have subluxation of the carpus i am going to show you in the next x ray so these are the ct scan based classification as per the fragments that we have discussed and the third important universally accepted classification it is my humble request to all registrars and residents of every institute this is the only classification which is going to give us complete idea about and and the there is there will be extremely less intra observer or inter observer uh, difficulties in identifying the fractures so here we are going to discuss only about type b classification the in because the type b classifications are mainly involved for ligament injuries and the ao also divides these into sub types b1 b2 and b3 in a simple nutshell b1 has a very small fragment and b2 has a large single fragment and b3 has comminuted fragments so this is in our subsequent cases i will show you how this uh, this classification is important for us to understand now 
after understanding the ligamentous anatomy and the important classification let us understand how injuries happen i mean the ligament injuries happen along with the fractures as per the literature so this is one of the latest literature it suggests intercarpal ligament injury associated with distal radius fracture if you see this these are the three different studies that they have mentioned the number one studies like geisler's classification he took out 60 intraarticular fractures to my surprise when i was reading the paper out of 60 19 had scaphoid unit injuries and 9 had lunotraquital injuries all these fractures were fixed by volar plating and the patient had persistent restriction of terminal movements and pain while load bearing the wrist and subsequently they were examined by wrist arthroscopy after i mean first mri first and then wrist arthroscopy and these were their numbers out of this 28 patient who had intercarpal ligament injuries out of 28 14 patient required surgical intervention to repair the scapula unit and lunotraquital ligament and they improved as per the literature if you understand the second study that is done by richards et al they had studied 88 intraarticular fractures and 30 extraarticular fractures so out of 118 20 i mean 30 patients had intercarpal ligament injury this number is very very significant and the last study done by lindau where he had studied 44 intraarticular and 6 extraarticular fractures and they had out of 50 they had 34 patients with intercarpal ligament injury yes i understand maximum time these ligament injuries they heal by conservative treatment or by protecting the fracture even after a best stable fixation some time you have to protect the fracture so message from this literature to all surgeons is we all we all maximum time check the distal radio ulnar joint stability after fixation of the distal and radius fracture but we never check scaphoid unit ligament injury or a lunotraquital ligament injury after distal and radius fracture so we should make a point at least for intraarticular fractures or even for extraarticular fracture we have to understand the arc of gilula or the distance between the two bones scaphoid and lunet and lunet and traquitrum or in the lateral view we have to see the position of the lunet because these numbers are significantly higher and probably we may miss these injuries and that's why in spite of a best fixation of the distal and radius some patients will have a compromised function let us take one example so this patient no doubt on x ray wise had a severely comminuted fracture intraarticular fracture and as now if i apply that medoff classification on the volar side i see a ulnar column is completely displaced articular incongruency of more than 2 mm and there is a vertical split metaphyseal comminution as well now in this case probably we are not able to judge the distance between the scaphoid and lunet i mean we are not able to judge intercarpal instability but if you once we fix this fracture so this fracture has been fixed very well by using two cortical screws and putting a plate long plate but now you see post fixation the patient has a scaphoid unit dissociation a very classical terry thomas sign now this patient <coughs> excuse me this patient is going to certainly have a restricted dorsiflexion and a palmar flexion in spite of a best fracture and we may blame the comminution or a severity of the fracture for this patient to get a final outcome so ultimately this patient required a ligament reconstruction of the scaphoid and lunet and then became all right but of course once we see this x ray we have to understand or study the dynamic instability of this fracture and uh, scaphoid unit dissociation here the lunet you lunet seems to be well in center but the patient had a dynamic instability now another literature i want to quote here and then i would like to give you example this literate this was a dorsal wrist ligament injury and they studied in a intraarticular fracture actually it's a cadaveric study it they have done a intraarticular fracture in a distal and radius and then they check the movement and after that they cut the wrist ligament on the dorsal side and then they check the movement so this was the cadaveric study and so what was the result when the intact 
wrist ligament on the dorsal side in spite of a intraarticular fracture there was no significant volar or dorsal translation of the lunate but the moment they cut the extrinsic ligaments of the wrist there was significant volar subluxation of the carpus so definitely extrinsic ligament play a extremely important role in stabilizing the fracture in spite of your fixation so how do we understand how how do we judge whether our patient has a extrinsic ligament injury so this is how a cadaveric study these pictures are taken from the article see this is how this they have done a intraarticular osteotomy here and they had put one so this is how they had done a hand grip cycling and this is how they so this is the intact dorsal wrist ligament and this is where they cut the dorsal ligament and that is how they studied that article based on that they have come up with the classification see here we many times we see volar limb absolutely intact and a dorsally small chip or small fragment and then we try to exp explain the patient that the fracture size is very very small we can conserve this but you please remember this is how the volar uh, dorsal subluxation of the carpus occurs because of injury to the extensory uh, ligament of the uh, wrist so whenever the message with this article for all surgeon is if you see a dorsal comminution please understand it is a avulsion fracture of radiocarpal dorsal radiocarpal ligament and sometime it may need fixation let us take a example this is a example taken from the same article here we see a volar rim fracture with the so much distal rim and the dorsal comminution so here they had put a hook plate which is not available in our country we have different method of fixation and they had put a buttressing plate on the dorsal side of the wrist so that now the carpus is which is subluxated in this picture it is very well in center i will show you my example so this is the x ray where you see the distal end radius fracture is extremely at the distal end radius it is a juxta articular fracture where no plate is going to have any screw hold in the distal fragment and if you see the carpus the lunate usually lunate remains in the center of the radius but it has been subluxated on the dorsal side so such fractures it is a shear rim fracture of the dorsal rim and we have to temporarily fix this by k wires so that the lunate remains into the center of the distal end radius and then we put a dorsal plate to buttress sometime we may not put any screws into the distal uh, part of the plate and because the plate is acting as a buttressing and then they have excellent function because now the subluxation of the carpus has been corrected the last article i want to explain is volar plate fixation failure for volar distal end radius fracture this is a very very inconspicuous case fracture and the study has been done on 52 patients and i the, what they studied in this paper is how the volar lunate facet of a distal end radius fracture gives the functional outcome and they have studied in terms of carpal translation and lunate subsidence let us see so what is lunate subsidence is in short the articular incongruency and what is carpal volar carpal translation is with the lunate sliding down on the volar side of the wrist so these are the markings what they have understood and let us take a example this is simple volar barton fracture i am very sure for any surgeon we just consider putting a plate and that is what it has been done they had put a plate on the volar side of the carpus now if you see this x ray very carefully the, there was a volar ulnar fragment here and there was no i mean the hold on that fragment so this was the well centered x ray and absolutely nothing but then after 3 months look at this the lunate was post operative x ray absolutely in center and if you see here there was a volar subluxation of the lunate so what went wrong there if you see this x ray i will tell you uh, that they, they missed the catching the ulnar fragment on the volar side let us take this x ray so this was the injury x ray and i am very sure i mean this was the x ray let us see so what they did sorry yeah so this was the badly displaced x ray and they had put a volar plate and if you see this there was articular incongruency here and this volar fragment was probably uh, they had a purchase of only one screw here and then immediately after 3 weeks 
they understood the lunet has been dors uh, volarly subluxated and again they revised by putting a fragment specific fixation but in spite of that the fracture was not uh, stable and the the corpus was still subluxating ultimately they had to consider a radio scaphoid and radio lunet fusion in this case so sometime the message here if you see this x ray then this x ray and this x ray sometimes the lunet volar lunet ligaments are extremely important L the ligament there is radio lunet ligament so we have to consider fixation of this fragment uh, properly let us take this example so this is the x ray which is causing a dorsal rim fracture extremely very uh, juxta articular fracture and sometime we have to do a volar exposure and we don't put any screws because here the problem here is volar side of the radio carpal ligaments are injured and that's why the corpus has been subluxated dorsally and we have to take ethibon sutures into the volar capsule and that we tie to the rim plate as fixed here and in the distal part of the holes of the rim we take the ethibon sutures and this is the post op x ray if you see the lateral pre op x ray the rim fracture and now if you see the lunet has been well centered probably this plate this plate is called rim plate if even if it would have come little distal the fracture i mean the fixation would have been better but this is how the reduction of the corpus has been achieved so in conclusion i would like to give highlight that we should look for three important fragment one is volar ulnar fragment because it may cause volar subluxation of the corpus then ra radial styloid fragment because it has a large radio scaphoid ligament attached and a dorsal rim fracture so whenever you see these three fractures apart from your extra articular fractures we should be worried about considering or having a ligament injury in those patients intra articular fracture we must consider a 3d ct scan because it will give us the location of the fragment size of the fragment and requirement of fragment specific fixation because sometimes the size of the fragment is so small that we may not able to put a screw but sometimes we may have to use anchors or ethibon sutures and if the size of the fragment is large we can fix them with the screws or small plates and intercarpal ligament injury is not uncommon as i had shown you into that literature that every every study of in 100 fractures almost 20 to 30 patients they had a scapholunate and lunotracheal ligament injury so the message third message is here that once you check once you put the plate on the distal radius please check radio ulnar movement and check the check for scaphoid lunar dissociation and a lunotracheal dissociation that's all thank you very much mm -hmm.